Welcome everyone to Hashing It Out. I'm your host, Becky Legiro, and we have something special for you here today. On September 7th, Enchain participated in a responsible gambling panel at the Social Responsibility for Gambling Operators Conference in London. Enchain's BSV blockchain powered Kenzai solution is now available for iGaming operators, and it provides an unrivaled platform for data management with respect to responsible gambling. This episode of Hashing It Out will provide a doorway into the iGaming industry's needs and reception of blockchain blockchain technology with respect to responsible gambling. We have three guests for you today, all three who are attendees at the event on the 7th. Our first guest is Peter Higgins, a commercial mediator who specializes in gambling disputes. So in essence, there are there is an ADR procedure in place that gambling operators have to adhere to, which is put in place by the UK Gambling Commission. And IBAS in the UK deals with most of the betting disputes. I get engaged when there's a dispute between an operator and a client that's grey, not quite clear, hasn't been settled, mm -hmm. and I avoid it going to litigation. So I get pulled in as a referee, as a facilitator, and these disputes could be five figures up to seven figures. So it's very, very new in the gambling industry. It's very common in the business sector in general, but it's a growing area because of things like social responsibility and so forth. Very good. Okay. And can you talk to us about uh, what kind of disputes you've been seeing, especially since we've had a time of COVID when people are at home and they're, they're maybe gambling online a bit more. What, what are the numbers that you're seeing and, and how are they increasing, if, if at all? Sure. So two main types. One is there's bet disputes that for some or whatever reason, an adjudication panel hasn't been able to help settle on that dispute. So mm -hmm. they're referred. Many examples where it could be a gray area, but the growing area is around the license incurred on social responsibility. Self-exclusion mm -hmm. that may have been complicated. You could have a retail-based operator and an online-based operator, different companies, and the client has signed up with one, not the other. What happens there? Other cases whereby affordability is going to be the big growth area. Clients who are able to look at that operator perhaps shouldn't let me bet as much as I did during that period, and we're seeing a lot of those cases. So because the ADR is not in place to cover those today, that's where a lot of the referrals are coming from. I think the Gambling Act Review should be looking at closing down some of those areas but it's a growing area that we're seeing today. Great, okay, and at this conference here, we've been talking about how the latest in technology, new technology can maybe help with the job that you have. Um, can you talk to me about how you would, would anticipate that blockchain technology might be able to help what you're doing? For example, there is this immutable ledger where the conversations that operators are having with players are on this ledger, you can't mess with it, anyone can look at it. How would that help your job, would you say? Well, it won't help my job. What it'll do is settle some of the disputes so that they don't get to this stage, which is a good thing. I'm mm. basically dealing with stages that we're trying to avoid going to litigation. Mm. So if you can have these ledgers in place that prove what was placed when, with some different examples, in crude terms, it's basically more evidence for the operator mm -hmm. or for the client in that case. So I think that would be a great area for assisting in terms of making sure that disputes don't go to dispute resolution. So it'd be very useful for looking at the real track of what was in place beforehand. Our second guest is David Clifton. He was serving as the conference chair and also has years of experience in compliance and regulation within the UK gambling industry. And so David, in all of the panels that have been happening so far, technology has been a big topic, uh, ways of sharing data, ways of keeping track of data. Can you share a few of the technological themes that have emerged here at this event so far? Yes, I can. And just picking up on use of the word data, we had Tim Miller, who's executive director at the commission, speaking first thing this morning. And um, I think the word data pretty well sums up the major emphasis of his presentation. The data is there. It's a question of how operators are, are using that data. But what has been happening, and that's been evidenced certainly by a number of the sessions today, is that the technology is becoming becoming more complex, but also becoming more available. Um, and personally, I will not be in the slightest bit surprised if we see from this government review a more formal requirement for UK licensed operators to use the technology that, that is, is available. Um, and in all possibility, that may prove a little bit tricky for smaller operators. Um, and so that's going to need to be addressed. Um, but I, I 
I think the expectation on the part of the Commission is that if the technology is there to assist as far as safer gambling processes are concerned, operators should be using it. Very good. And, and one of your panelists today, Nick Hill, he was speaking on behalf of Enchain, which has a solution mm. that is built on the blockchain yeah. that is meant to help online gambling operators comply with responsible gambling initiatives and all yeah. sorts of great ways of, of using data. So from your experience, what role do you think blockchain technology can and, and will play in this um, responsible gambling initiative here? Well, that's a very interesting question because a lot of us are still learning about blockchain. I think that it's something that um, up to now, from a UK gambling regulatory perspective, has been too closely associated possibly with um, cryptocurrencies and so on. And um, certainly the Gambling Commission here uh, do have concerns from a regulatory perspective money laundering and uh, or potential money laundering concerns there. So it was illuminating, to be honest, to hear how this blockchain technology can be utilized in terms of providing a, a, a potential safer gambling solution. So no, very interesting indeed. I love the word illuminating. That is <laughs> exactly why Nikhil is here. Yeah, and I think what is really interesting is this point that you made that there, blockchain technology can be used for many, many ways other than for payments. Yep. And I think regulators are much more open to talking about ways to use the blockchain tech itself. Mm you know, to, to power responsible gambling initiatives versus funding accounts, I think. Absolutely. And I mean, I think what, we, what we've what we learned today is the manner in which um, blockchain can be used to track the player journey, to show the markers, the indicators of gambling related harm. And so uh, that's what this technology is, 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 is really powerful at doing. And that's why I expect we're going to be finding out a lot more about it and hearing a lot more from the Commission about it. And finally, Nick Hill of Premier Chain spoke at the event on behalf of NChain. His goal at the event was to educate delegates on why platforms like Kenze provide a superior solution for responsible gambling initiatives. The essence here is responsible gaming for us and how blockchain can um, benefit and assist with uh, with responsible gaming. And as you've we've spoken about before, um, the use of blockchain enables um, an operator to almost like take out an insurance policy against um, potential penalties or fines. Because using blockchain, when a marker of harm could be triggered in the player's um, journey, um, when they start to demonstrate um, potential problem gaming, gaming issues or potential uh, irresponsible gambling, a marker of harm can be triggered. And this is when um, the blockchain comes into its own in that um, the communication between that player and the operator can be logged on the, the ledger and is then an immutable source of truth. And this is the, the interesting bit because this is where the operator can then always refer back to that string of communication, that line of communication, and they can use that for themselves, obviously to protect the player, and also if the regulator wants access, they can take it from there and sort of have access to that, that, that communication. Very, very good. Super exciting, super exciting times for blockchain. And, and Nick, I think one thing has changed, though, since we talked last. Before you were representing uh, the online gambling industry, and today you're representing Enchain, yes. which is really cool. And and, and Enchain has released Kenze. They are actually, they have a product for the gambling industry now. So can you describe uh, where we are with Enchain's product right now? Okay, so yes, Enchain have uh, developed the, the Kense platform, which I think they launched on July the 22nd. So the first vertical that I've been brought in to help them target is obviously the iGaming space. Mm -hmm. And now with the notarization capabilities of Kense, this is where we can start to use the blockchain within the responsible gaming mm -hmm. vertical, within the vertical, so to speak. There are other aspects that you can use Kense for, like working closely with company, company with a K that is, mm -hmm. Um, that they can use it for KYB, AML, KYC purposes. You know, again, the, the, this conference lends itself to, uh, to to that side of the business. So, you know, having the product now and Kenze sort of bridging that gap between sort of the legacy technologies that the operators are using and the new technology, blockchain, BSV, mm -hmm. um, 
is 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 where it's so well positioned at the moment. That's where end chain are positioning themselves. So I'm sort of representing end chain as their sales funnel or ambassador into yeah. the iGaming vertical. Yeah. Oh, and I just love this so much because you're actually here. You're in the thick of it, right in front of the gambling industry professionals. Yeah, absolutely. And I know on your panel, Nick, you were referencing crucial compliance. Yes. And I wanted to know how they fit into what Enchain is doing and how their product will be able to utilize blockchain tech. Right. Okay. So crucial compliance, by the nature of the name of their company, are a company that. Um, is involved in responsible gaming and the compliance of that. So they've um, devised some markers of harm, as they call them, um, and there's 174 different markers of harm. And these markers of harm are embedded in the uh, the CRM tool of the um, the operator, so you can map the player's journey and life cycle through that site. And you know. If a marker of harm is triggered, and it could be um, that they're visiting the site more frequently, they are depositing more heavily, you know, a whole plethora, 174, as I say, markers of harm, um, is triggered, that's when the communication then goes on chain, um, so that all that communication is then on chain, so that you can, because it becomes the responsibility of the operator now to sort of maybe suggest a timeout, suggest a break in play, suggest, you know, setting a bet limit or a deposit limit or a loss limit, you know, and if things are escalating, to actually pick the phone up and reach out to the player and, you know, communicate and, you know, educate the player to a certain extent because when they're in the thick of it and they're maybe chasing losses or chasing winnings, they could be making ir irrational decisions. And sometimes it's like, hey, just take some time out, guy. Yeah. Or, you know, or why don't you set yourself, you lost two grand last night, why don't you set yourself a loss limit or a deposit limit? Because I'm sure that two grand must have hurt. You know, so this is where crucial compliance comes in. So uh, N-Chain are working very closely with them and others, um, but crucial compliance are the, the first ones, they've got first mover advantage, but, yeah, because there are a number of other sort of companies out there that do very similar things to Crucial Compliance, but they're sort of the, the biggest and the most prominent one at the moment. Fantastic. And if you would like to hear more from Crucial Compliance and from Company and from Nick, join us at CoinGeek New York for our Responsible Gambling and KYC KYB panel. Indeed, yes. <laughs> I look forward to that, Becky, and uh, continuing these conversations that we have. Yay, me too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Specky Legiro for CoinGeek.com. to redefine industries. Time for the BSB blockchain. It's about time, New York City.